Hey guys, Scott here with Adventure Further Off-Road. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about our Starlink. Normally I have a box sitting here which stands about 10 inches tall. And then we have our two roto packs over here that stand about probably seven inches tall. And then we have in the middle, Starlink. Starlink has been one of the greatest things. I was on the fence. I already own RV, or it's actually the residential with portability. And I actually turned the portability on before they don't allow it anymore, where you have to now go to the RV version. Mobile was uh, quite at the investment to do it. And I was debating if it was something that I wanted to spend the money on, but ultimately, after spending the money and pulling the trigger on it, I have to say it is one of the greatest upgrades, number one upgrades. My number two is the mattress in my AT Habitat. The number one upgrade was this Starlink having it because not it's not that I need to be connected to my telephone or to people or to Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. It's actually more for when we're doing route planning. When we're out in the country and you get to a camp spot and it's taken, and you have to go to multiple camp spots, yes, you can download maps. I know people are gonna say that. Hey, Scott, just download a map. Well, I do download the maps, but satellite ver versus uh, like street views, those aren't as quick to operate. And I've truly been sick of it. We use Gaia, we use Onyx Off-Road, we use uh, iOverlander. I mean, we use all these different programs and I download most of the maps, but as we're driving now, I've been driving down the interstate and I've been like, all right, uh, we're gonna pull off to this side road here that I'm not familiar with. I'm gonna zoom in on a satellite view, which they always lag. With this, I can go to Google Earth, which I don't download Google Earth Maps. Sometimes it's not as good as a Gaia map. And so having Starlink mobile for reasons like that is truly amazing. The next thing is we actually had a Jeep fire last year um, in Kanab, Utah by Lake Powell. And if I, my wife would have had Starlink or I would have had Starlink, instead of trying to text back and forth via the little GPS, um, which is our inReach, I, had, I have Starlink and she has Starlink in her vehicle. Instantly, I was, I'm able to see it. Hers, her version of Starlink is just the one where you it's it's the you have to set it up, go take it out 30 feet, set it up and get a clear view of the sky. And I'm still going to keep that because we have our motor home. Granted, we still do a lot of this off grid traveling, but with our motor home, that dish seems to work way better versus having this one. Because with when I'm in my motor home, I try to get tree cover so I'm not in the sun and they're not just blaring. The sun's not blaring on it and the ACs are running. So with that, I'm able to carry it over 30 feet into the clearing and use that one. With this one, you can't do that. You have to have a clear line of sight for the sky. Granted, we were running through the Ponderosa Pines in the Gila National Forest. And even in the pines, it actually got pretty decent service. It wasn't as good, obviously, as the clear sky, but surprisingly, did get some service. So um, it actually exceeded, far, far exceeded my expectations of having the Starlink Mobile. It is definitely large. I think it's somewhere around 22 inches wide, 24 inches long. And uh, that, you know, I had to make a little room up here on top of my rack, on top of my cab. But I would say it's definitely been um, uh, a great thing to have. I, and at this point, you won't see me without it. The only drawback, besides the price, the only drawback is how much power this thing uses. No one said how much power this thing was gonna use. I didn't see any reviews for how much power it was gonna use, and maybe I just wasn't looking at the right reviews, but I have to say, this thing pulls an obnoxious amount of power. I have a 200 amp lithium battery built into my Jeep Gladiator Overland setup, and with that 200 amps of lithium running my fridge in this, Overnight, I can go from 99% down to 32% pretty much every night. So that is using a lot of power. I seen power draws anywhere from seven to about nine and a half amps. 
is where I seen this thing fluctuate using, and I don't know if it's because of the motor running inside this thing, trying to collect satellites, but there is two routers for this satellite dish. One I think is actually more of a power bank that it uses, but it's large. It's the same size as the router, and then you have the router. So I had to mount both of them down by my 200 amp lithium battery, and I, I mean, I, and, I, and I ran all the wires along. It's only one wire that comes out of the dish that goes into those, but I had to run that all through my overland setup and into where my uh, 200 amp lithium battery is. So once it's hardwired, I was hoping to switch it between vehicles. I don't really think I'm going to. I had plans to, I was gonna do quick disconnect mounts. I was gonna be like, all right, here, we'll go put it on the motor home. We'll go put it on the truck. We'll go put it on this and use it a lot more. I think this is probably gonna stay here. I don't think it's gonna probably uh, move on to anything else unless I'm doing something in the foreseeable future where I need extensive internet but as of right now, with us going to Alaska, that's gonna be the true telltale. With being remote in the middle of nowhere in Alaska, they're adding a lot of satellites up there. Really hoping this thing strikes it rich for us because then we're gonna have the capabilities to do everything off, um, off grid and remotely from everywhere. We're gonna go all the way down as far as like Valdez, all the way up to Prudhoe Bay. So we're gonna be traveling a lot of country and we're hoping that this is panning, gonna pan out great for us. So leave in the comments if you're in Alaska and how your mobile works while you're there. I'd really like to know how this works and um, find out if we're gonna have problems with it, if there's anything else I can do to make it better. But uh, other than that, definitely a win for Starlink. <laughs>